I got to tune into the Paul Feinbaum show a little bit today because, you know, some big things happened in college football over the last few days, and especially in the SEC with Alabama beating Georgia 27-24 on Saturday in the SEC championship. Bama gets in as the four in the college football playoff as the last team, the last uh, team to slip in to the 14 college football playoff in Alabama. Congratulations. That's what you got, Bama. Georgia gets left out, and they get... It dropped from one to six. So there's a lot of stuff that I don't agree with. Some of it I've hit on. Some of this is going to be new. Some of this I'm going to be reiterating a little bit. Maybe my opinion is a little bit more developed about it. Obviously, we've been coming out here and trying to produce the same content every day uh, because you got to keep a move on. we got to keep a move on. Ryan Clay from Dog Post here talking about what Paul Feinbaum had to say. He said that these analytics are nonsensical and that Georgia should be over Florida State and that they're probably one of the four best teams. All three of those things, Paul, I agree with you. And 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 Paul has always been pretty clear with me, you know, over these last couple of years that he thinks Georgia is the best team, best program in the country at the moment. And look, here's the hmm, how do I put it? For Georgia, the anti-Georgia argument, right? So let's get the the anti-argument out of the way for Georgia. Struggled a couple times this year. Struggled with Auburn. Struggled with right, obviously. Alabama struggled with teams, Michigan struggled with teams, Washington struggled with teams. That was the case for everyone at the top. So that's not something you throw, you kind of throw that out the window almost with um, with that argument with, with Georgia. Like just saying about a Georgia, you can't um, because the other teams struggled arguably more, right? Especially in the month of November, Georgia just flat out dominated um, ending in October and at the month of November. So Paul, what he was really talking about was how, you know, this is a different group of, this, this is a jury. Today, this, this is a jury. This is my analogy. This is, every year, it's, it's a new jury, and there's a new trial, right? And there's these 12, 13 people coming up with this, and they have different opinions, and it's different every year. That's the reason why it hasn't been consistent in, this is the criteria, right? We, you know, I believe, you know, four best, four best, all that. And if it is this, supposed to be the four best teams, well, guess what? They've gotten it wrong more than once. They've gotten it wrong more than once. Um, if we're talking about, and you want to know why I think that? Look, I'm not the only person out there that should have an opinion on this. Um, I watch a lot. It is my job to watch. It is my job to write and talk about it. I read a lot. I keep up with stuff. Um, I keep myself for I talk to people. I talk to people that cover other teams, right? So I know Alabama reporters. I know all these other people, whatever. There is not a single person I have talked to that does not think Georgia is one of the four best teams in college football. And there's not a single person I've talked to that thinks Florida State's better than Georgia. And the thing about Florida State that people do not want to realize is that the consensus on the Seminole, there's a reason why Florida State was ranked at four being undefeated like that and having a win over LSU. And having wins and those being their marquee wins, there's a reason why Florida State was already not ranked number one or two. And what Florida State's harping on now, and and look, I get it. it it's tragic for Florida State. You're 13 and 0 conference champion. Your quarterback is out for the season. That's the end of his college football career. And an unprecedented thing happens, and it really hurts Florida State. I understand the frustration there. I get it. It doesn't mean I think you're one of the four best teams in college football. And that's what the last two weeks I felt like. I've spent a lot of time on here, you know, just dogging Florida State. And it's really not. I'm just, this is what, what the topic is right now, and this is what we're talking about. Dropping Georgia from one to six behind Florida State is the most unserious part about this whole thing. You're telling me that Georgia loses to a very, very good Alabama team that the committee obviously feels is one of the four best teams in college football, or at least is one of the four most deserving to be in the playoff. You're telling me that Georgia loses the SEC championship after going 12-0, And loses to a top 10 team, now a top 4 team, by 3 points on a neutral site in a game where, if you watched it, yes, yes, Alabama outcoached and outplayed Georgia a little bit. Uh, But that was was a poorly officiated football game, mostly in Bama's favor. There were some calls the other way around, and that's how it goes. And I'm going to be the one to sit here and recognize those things. But yeah, are we talking about analytics here? Because the problem with the committee is, and this is the problem with human thought and human opinions, is no one feels the same exact way. And 
they were inconsistent with, oh, these are the four best versus these are, you know, this is who we can justify because I agreed having Florida State out because as they're not one of the four best teams, but I understand like the logic of, well, Texas beat Alabama and Alabama beat Georgia or yeah, well, that's not how things work. You really think Texas is better than Georgia? Do you think Washington is better than Georgia? Seriously, if you're at this point at 520, at 520, tell me, please, if you, and you're not a Georgia fan. You're, you're not a Georgia fan. You're an unbiased party in this. Do you think Washington and, and Texas are better than Georgia? No. And that's the problem with this whole thing. And guess what? It's not a problem. It won't be a problem after, after these next month or two. But it is, it is a problem that's happening right now. And that's obviously why I'm sitting here talking about it and why you're sitting here listening to me. So, you know, look, I, I agree. Yeah, have, <laughs> dropping Georgia behind Florida State was the most bizarre thing to me. Conference championships are not made equal. Weekly schedules are not made equal. There's a reason why the rankings happen, and that's why these things play out this way. And there's always been a reason why an undefeated SEC champion or an undefeated SEC team is ranked ahead an undefeated ACC team or Big Ten team. Usually, usually, it's because that team's better. And that's what we see when you get to the actual playoff. Because most of the time... The team that we thought was either the first or second best team in the country wins the college football playoff. And the issue now is, and as most people probably feel, Georgia's a top four team, they don't have a chance. And that's the tragic part for Florida State as well. They don't have a chance now, the two teams. And just because of the way the bowls rule, the bowl rules work, which I don't know how much will be followed from now on with all of them, all the New Year's Six Bowls being playoff games. I think it'll be different. And so maybe this is the final year for it. The, the Orange Bowl does have ties with has had ties with the SEC and ACC. It just so happened to work out that Florida State and Georgia are going to play each other, and they happen to be five and six. So you want to look on the bright side of this thing. This is the consolation game. This is the consolation game, and both programs and fan bases and teams and players are all extremely frustrated. I was reading a Fox News, Fox 13 News article today, um, package video, about how they're, they're sending uh, letters to the Supreme Court, the like Florida government. Is, is wants some sort of appeal or wants some information. I was listening to five minutes before this when I was driving to get home to do this. I had Atlanta Sports Radio on, and they were talking about how well why why can't we know what the conversations were? I'd love to hear what the conversations were. Really, I really would because man, when and this is Boo Kerrigan, right? The the committee chair this year. He he go he on those all these on the all the selection shows. He's gone on and answered questions. My big issue with the thing is when asked to justify certain things, all that this guy would talk about were individual player statistics. And so let's compare 2014 Ohio State to this Florida State team. Ohio State deals with their quarterback issues and dominate and had a player that was playing out of his mind in Ezekiel Elliott. Well, Boo Kerrigan referenced Trey Benson's three-touchdown game a couple weeks ago um, as a reason to keep Florida State ranked where they were. What does Trey Benson's three touchdowns have to do with the team's overall ranking and status? What does that have to do with it? What about the way the team performed? And uh, let's, let's, pull, let's pull up the game. 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 I want numbers and evidence. Against Florida. Florida game. I think it was for the Florida game. They went down there and only won by nine. And that was at the very end. You want me to be a box score watcher? I'll pull up the box score. They were down in the fourth quarter to Florida. Five and seven Florida. In November. And I get that that was without Florida State. But that's not what happened with Ohio State. They dominated 59 to nothing in their Big Ten championship game against Wisconsin. It's not apples and oranges. How good is this was that Wisconsin team compared to the Louisville team and this Florida team? Right, so that's my point. And the Florida State was getting faded before, not faded drugs. Florida State was getting faded. Um, if you don't know what that means, I realize that that's kind of a slang term. People were starting to lower their opinion about Florida State. Before the Jordan Travis injury. 
and people are harping on that as the thing that they're keeping them out. And that's what the committee is uh, doing instead of just saying with the eyes what they actually think. It's, it's, it's all bizarre to me. You want to hear the other part of it? Uh, I think media narrative does play a factor into it. Everyone just predicted what the rankings were going to be instead of staying, saying what they should be. right? And in that, in that case, Georgia was never talked about in that 24-hour period. How influential is the media on the committee's thoughts? How influential is ESPN on the committee's thoughts? We'll never really know. I don't think, maybe, unless they release those conversations. But yeah, are the analytics a little bit nonsensical? Yes, I agree with what Paul Feinbaum had to say. I had a lot to say here, and I said something around 520. Uh, Let me know if I was wrong about that. Thanks.